thinking back, some of my very favorite days of homeschooling were preschool days. And that's what we're going to be talking about on today's episode of the podcast. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Barnhill and I have helped thousands of homeschoolers beat burnout, create doable systems, and bring more joy to their homeschool days. Welcome to episode 34 of the 10 Minutes to a Better Homeschool podcast. So today we're going to be talking all about preschool and kind of the five things you need to get started doing preschool in your home. And if you would like some more information about preschool, we have a free preschool checklist for you. So it's kind of a checklist of preschool skills, things that you might want to kind of keep in the back of your mind as you're teaching your preschooler at home. And then also included in that little packet are some really fun activity ideas for you. So you can get those by coming to pambarnhill.com slash preschool. Okay, so let's talk about those five things that you need to get started preschooling in your home. And some of them are going to not quite be what you think they are. So first of all, you need some community. So I started my first homeschooling group when my daughter was four, and we did it for a couple of reasons. First of all, we did it so she could meet other homeschoolers and kind of like really get used to this idea of what homeschooling is, because if all she ever knows and all she ever plays with are people who get on the bus and go to school all day, she's going to feel like a little different than they are. And so by getting her immersed in the homeschool culture and meeting homeschoolers and other kids who are going to be like, her really made her feel good about homeschooling. It was kind of like a normal thing that a lot of people did. So that was the first thing. The second thing was for me because we were coming out of our play group where we had spent a lot of time playing with um, other little people and those little people were heading off to preschool. They were heading off to two day a week preschool, three day a week preschool, half day preschool. And I was beginning to get a little lonely because All of our friends were going off somewhere else. And so we needed to start shifting from the preschool play group to the homeschooling group so that I could really find my people as well. So it kind of went for the kids and for me. Now, a lot of people will say, well, it's kind of silly to join a homeschool co-op when your oldest is only four. And actually, it's not because you really do need to find your people. So if you have some other people who are just homeschooling preschoolers and you can kind of form your own little group, that's great. But don't be afraid to reach out to any of the more established homeschool communities around you. And I'm not talking about ones that you need to pay for. I'm talking about like park meetup groups and things like that. That's the kind of of thing that uh, you could really just get out there and meet those other people. So that's thing number one. The second thing is get books. This is the second thing you need for homeschooling preschool. Actually, if I had to choose like the number one thing on this list, books would be it. You want books to read to your kids. And I'm not talking chapter books. I'm talking picture books. Lots and lots and lots of picture books. Bring them home from the library, buy the trunk full, and read those books to your children. There's so much that they can get just from hearing you read so many important language skills, so much they can learn about the world, um, so many things. And so read books to your kids. You can't read too much. And I would say if you have your choice between, oh, let's do this worksheet or this other little activity where we need to sit at the table and let's read a book, spend your time reading the book. Now, you're going to have some kids who are really into hands-on stuff that's totally okay. Let them play with cars or play with Legos or play with shaving cream. Um, We used to get a little plastic table and put it out on our back porch and let the kids just go to town with shaving cream and they would end up, you know, stripping off to their underwear and I'd spray them down with the hose and bring them back inside. But you know, they could listen to books while they're doing that. So your child doesn't need to be sitting right next to you constantly while you're reading to him or her. They can be playing, they can be doing things with their hands, but always err on the side of let's read more to your child. All right, 
The third thing is go ahead and arm yourself, especially if you think you're going to have family that's like, why are you not sending your child to preschool? Like, is this a little weird? You're going to become one of those homeschool people. Everybody knows one of those weird homeschool families. And trust me, they're going to bring that weird family out and parade them in front of you every single time uh, you talk about homeschooling. So go ahead and arm yourself with a little bit of information. And so a couple of books that you might choose would be uh, Einstein Never Used Flashcards. This was a favorite of mine when my kids were in preschool. So much really good information in this book. And we have actually uh, built our Little Explorers preschool program Um, at PamBarnhill.com on a lot of the philosophy that's in this particular book. So this is a great one to read up on. So when somebody comes at you with like, you know, doesn't your kid need to be learning their ABCs faster or something like that, you've got some information here to counter them with. Another great one that I absolutely love is the Read Aloud Family. So there's a whole section in here on toddlers and preschoolers, which books should you, uh, which are really good to read aloud. And then also a lot of the research behind why reading aloud is good for really young kids. So these two right here are two that I would highly recommend for kind of arming yourself with information. So when the naysayers come, you can turn around and say, well, you know what? I've got something to tell you, and you will, and you do, and you can be really confident in your choice to preschool at home. So that brings me to thing number four. The fourth thing that you need when you're preschooling at home is actually a lot of things, (laughs) Um, but it might not be the things that you expect. So load up your house with all the really fun things. Go get all the art supplies and lay them out and let your kids just create with them. Load up with all the books, get the puzzles, get the toys, get the musical instruments, get the dress up. The dress up is so important. Get uh, lots of stuffies so that you can play pretend and a dollhouse or a farm. We used to have all the little people when my kids were little. All of those pretend games and storytelling games are great precursors for the literary skills that your kids will need as they start to learn to read. Talk to your kids constantly. You really want to build that vocabulary because vocabulary is the number one indicator of later language success. Not whether or not your three-year-old knows his ABCs or can name the sounds or anything like that the vocabulary is. So talk to your kids all the time and bring in those really fun activities that you can do together that is causing you to talk to each other, causing you to have these fun conversations, causing you to build those language skills. And then finally, let's come to the last thing, which is really more kind of a thing you don't need than it is a thing you do need. And uh, I'm going to frame it in you need storage. (laughs) You need storage. You need some place to put all the stuff. You need some place to have it close at hand to wherever you live life. So what I'm saying you don't need is you don't necessarily need a schoolroom. You don't necessarily need a prepared preschool place because you'll notice if you ever go into preschools, if you ever go tour a preschool, they've really gone out of their way to make their preschool space look a lot like home. And so your home is more than adequate for doing preschool with your child because so much of preschool is just about living and learning together. And so have a place to put all your stuff, but that's really all you need. Now, eventually this stuff is going to try to take over your home. (laughs) It kind of has a life of its own and it gets everywhere. So having a place to put it, close the door, bring a little visual sanity back to yourself. I'm the kind of person that like needs some clean visual lines around me. Maybe you can deal with the chaos and that's great, but I love to have a place to put the stuff and close the door. So number five is a place for your stuff, but not necessarily a schoolroom. All right. Those are my five things that you need to start doing preschool with your preschooler and notice that there were no worksheets in there 
anywhere at all. But if you are interested in a little bit of curriculum help, we can provide that for you. Come on over and download our checklist at pambarnhill.com slash preschool and we will help you out. Now I will be back next week and next week we're going to be talking about how homeschool uniquely prepares your child to survive in the real world. And so do come back and join us for that one. 